Hello everyone, this is Al Red Sox Fan coming to you from Al Red Sox Fan YouTube channel. And we're going to be bringing you some Card and Dice Stratomatic. And this will be our Mini 4 Tournament number 4 Championship game. The 1953 Brooklyn Dodgers taking on the 1905 New York Giants in a battle for the Big Apple. The winner will advance with the prior Mini 4 Tournament Champions who are the 27 Yankees, the 86 Mets, and the 81 L.A. Dodgers. So let's get to the starting lineups and roll some dice. Hopefully everyone is doing well on this Saturday evening or whenever you're watching. For the visiting 1953 Brooklyn Dodgers, leading off playing second base, batting first, Jim Gilliam. Batting second, the shortstop, Pee Wee Reese. Batting third, the Duke of Flatbush, Duke Snyder. He's in center field. Batting fourth, Jackie Robinson, number 42. He is the designated hitter. Batting fifth, doing the catching, Roy Campanella. Batting sixth, patrolling right field, Carl Furillo. Batting seventh, the first baseman, Gil Hodges. Batting eighth, the third baseman, Billy Cox. Batting ninth, in left field, George Shuba. On the mound, a surprise start. We have chosen Clem Labine. Clem Labine in 1953 was 11 and 6, but his ERA was 2.78, uh, one of the better ERAs, if not the best ERA, on the Dodgers staff in 1953. So he gets the start in the Mini Four Championship game, tournament number four. The winner, again, will advance into the box of good, as we call it, with the 27 Yankees, 86 Mets, and 81 Dodgers. And now, for the home team, the 1905 New York Giants, leading off doing the catching, Roger uh, Bresnahan, batting second, the right fielder, George Brown, Batting third, the center fielder, Mike Donlin. Batting fourth, the first baseman, Dan McGann. Batting fifth, playing left field, Sam Mertis. Batting sixth, the shortstop, Bill Donlin. Batting seventh, patrolling the hot corner, the third baseman, Art Devlin. Batting eighth, the second baseman, Billy Gilbert. And batting ninth, the designated hitter, Frank Bowerman. On the mound for the 1905 New York Giants to bring them this prestigious mini four tournament number four championship and take them to the box of good, the promised land, Joe McGinty. McGinty, excuse me. And Joe McGinty, oh, I'm going to butcher that name 4,000 times, was 21 and 15 with a 2.87 earned run average in 1905. And we'll be using iScore, which I downloaded on my Kindle. Let's see if this works out well. It seems pretty cool. There are other people who use it. Let's go to the game. All right, here we go. On the mound, Joe McGintney. And at the plate is Jim Gilliam. McGintney picks up the sign from Bresnahan. And the ball game is on its way. Here's the first pitch to Jim Gilliam. And that is a six. Six. Pick up some sticks off the Joe McGintney card. So six, six is a walk. So Gilliam walks. Base on balls. Okay, so Gilliam's at first. He is an A base dealer, 1 through 16 running ability. And here comes Pee Wee Reese. Shortstop, 1953. Batted 271 with 13 homers. And we're playing with the hold rule. So... What that is, I found this rule in Stratomatic in the rules, and I want to use it with the basic. Uh, Roy Campanella's defensive catcher rating is a 1, so that's minus 4 
on any type of stealing or base running. And Bresnahan for the 1905 Giants is also a one-rated defensive catcher, so it's minus four on any base stealing or base running. So if we wanted, to give you a quick example of the rule, if we wanted Gilliam to try to steal second, and again, he is an A base stealer. We'd go to the, ba the basic base stealing chart, and an A base stealer is safe 1 through 15. But because Bresnahan is a minus 4 because of his 1 defensive rating, you take 4 off of that and be 1 through 11. Now, say if Gilliam wanted to advance 1st to 3rd on a base hit, and we have the opportunity to do that, He's a 1 through 16 base runner. In basic, there are no arm ratings, which there should be, to be honest with you. Not that hard for them to add them, um, which I might add on my own using different sim games. Uh, we go with the minus 4, and so 1 through 16 would be 1 through 12. With two outs, you'd add two back, and that would be 1 through 14. And that's the way we're playing with that rule. I've used it. I like it. And that's what we're sticking with. All right. So here's Pee Wee Reese. No outs. Gilliam's at first. The windup and the pitch from McGinty. And that is where the hell's the white die? Oh, there's the white die. Let's roll that. So that's a 6-6. Six, six, another 6-6. Six, six, and that's going to be another walk. So McGinty's struggling with his control. Gilliam advances to second. And Reese is at first, two on, no outs, and here comes the Duke of Flatbush, Duke Snyder, 336 in 1953 with 42 home runs. He'd love to go yard here off Mr. Joe McGinty. Roger Bresnahan sets the target, and here's the pitch to the Duke. And Snyder gets a 4-12 off the McGinty card. 4-12, ground ball, shortstop, X. So we're going to go to the fielding chart. The shortstop is Dolan. He is two rated. We rolled a three on the 20-sided die. So the shortstop, two rated, three. And that is a single. The runners advance two bases. Let's make sure I did that right. So Dolan, the shortstop, Bill Dolan, is a two rated fielder. And we rolled a three. See, I looked at it the wrong way. So that is an out one. And that will be runner advances one base. So the only play is the first as he goes deep in the hole. As Dollahan. Dolan, excuse me, throws out Snyder 6-3, to three, so that is an out. Ground out. Six to three. Done. That's pretty cool. And the runners advance one base. What happened to Jim Gilliam? He went to third. Advanced by batter. What happened to Pee Wee Reese? He went to second. Advanced by batter. All right, so second and third. And there is one out now. Top of the first. So at least it was a productive out for Duke Snyder, though he wanted more. Here comes Jackie Robinson. And we are using a designated hitter in many four tournaments. I don't want to see the pitcher hit. So Jackie Robinson comes to play chance to give the 53 Dodgers an early lead here off Joe McGinty. The windup and the pitch to Jackie Robinson, and that is a 4-8 off the Joe McGinty card. 4-8. And that's a 3, and that's going to be a double. 1 through 3 is a double. Two runs will score. 2 nothing. Brooklyn Dodgers with the one-out double by Jackie Robinson. 
So that's a double. Gilliam advanced to home. And Pee Wee Reese advanced to home. So it's 2 0 Dodgers with Jackie Robinson standing on second base. Here comes a catcher, Roy Campanella, batting 312 in 1953 with 41 homers. Jackie Robinson is an A base dealer. 1 through 16, but again, we have that minus 4 modification for the one defending catcher, Bresnahan. McGintney picks up the sign from Bresnahan. Here's the pitch to Campanella, and that is a 4-10 off the Joe McGintney card. 4-10 fly ball center field X, so this will be a play for Mike Donlin, and Donlin defensive rating is a 2, and we rolled a 5, so let's go to the fielding chart for outfielders in basic. Again, Donlin is a 2. We rolled a 5. And that's an out 4. And the runners hold. Not deep enough. Robinson doesn't challenge the arm. So Campanella is out flying to center. Out. Where's fly ball? Oh, fly out. There we go. So two outs. Robinson still at second. And here comes Carl Ferrillo, the right fielder. He had a great year in 53. 344 with 21 homers. And with two outs, there is no, uh, you add plus two to Jackie Robinson's run ability, which makes it a minus two in net from the minus four. So Robinson, one through 14. Ferrillo awaits the Joe McGitney offering. Here's the pitch homeward bound to Ferrillo, and that is a four. We've lived off that four column for McGitney. That's a 4-10. And that, again, a fly ball out to center. He rolled a 15. And we know the center fielder, Donlin, is a two fielder. So a two and a 15. And that is a single and an error. Batter advances to second. Another run scores. And it's 3 nothing Dodgers. Let's make sure we did that right. So that's a 4-10 fly ball center field X-15 on the 20-sided die. A two defender, 15 single, and an error. So 3 nothing Dodgers. Dodgers all over their, heat, their longtime rivals, historical rivals, the New York Giants. So Jackie Robinson scores. We go in play on the I score. And that was a single, soft single, we'll call it. Next, Robinson scores, advanced by batter, makes it 3 nothing, And Ferrillo moves up to second on the error. By the center fielder. So it's 3 nothing Dodgers. And Ferrello's in scoring position for the number 7 batter, Gil Hodges. McGitney with the windup and the pitch to Gil Hodges. And that's a 5-11. McGitney has not had luck off his own card. I'm sorry, that's a 5-12. So we go 5 and a 12. Ground ball back to McGitney. He will throw to Dan McGann, and the side's retired, but the Brooklyn Dodgers score three times. They go to the bottom of the first, 3-0 Brooklyn. The 1905 Giants coming to bat, so that's a ball in play. Out, ground out to the pitcher, and done. 
All right. So when we next come back with the Dodgers, Billy Cox will be leading off. And we're using iScore, so there's a little slight delay in my call, but it's kind of cool, iScore. Due up for the Giants, who trail by three. Bresnahan, the catcher. Brown, the right fielder. And Donlin, who made the error, the center fielder. So here's Roger Bresnahan. He batted 302 with no home runs in 1905. Did have 18 doubles and three triples. Decent speed for a catcher. He'll face Clem Labine. 11 and 6 again with a 278 earned run average. Labine picks up the signal from Campanella. Here's the pitch to his Roger Bresnahan, Campanella's counterpart, and that is a 4 11 off the Labine card. 4 11 ground ball to first and Gil Hodges. It's a 14. We have to go with the fielding check. Hodges, the first baseman, is a 1 fielder. So we go to the basic fielding chart. First baseman, we rolled a 14 on the 20-sided die. Hodges has it and throws to Labine for the out covering the bag. So Bresnahan is retired on the ground ball back to the pitcher. One to three. So one away. And here comes George Brown, the right fielder. Brown batted 293 with four home runs. Labine picks up the sign, the windup and the pitch to Brown, and that is a 3-4. Will Labine show him the door on the 3-4 off the George Brown card? 3-4, pop up to second. Gilliam makes the catch, two down. So that's a pop up to Gilliam. And they're two away. Now I'll bring up the center fielder, Mike Donlin, who committed an error in the top of the first. Two outs, no one on. Three nothing, Brooklyn Dodgers. Mike Donlin awaits the pitch, and here it is from Clem Labine. And that is a 4 11, a 4 11 off the Clem Labine card. 4 11, ground ball, first base, Gil Hodges. Again, we go to the fielding chart. Gil Hodges is a one defensive first baseman, and we rolled an 11. So a one and an 11. Hodges backhands it and throws the Labine covering the bag. Side is retired, 1, 2, 3. Go the 1905 Giants. We go to the top of the second. That's an out. Ground out, back to the pitcher, next. Done. All right. When the Giants come back up in the bottom of the second, Dan McGann will be leading off. So due up for the Dodgers with a 3 nothing lead will be Billy Cox, followed by George Shuba, and the top of the order, Jim Gilliam. So here's Billy Cox. Cox, an excellent defensive third baseman. He has a one rating. That's why he's in there, and Jackie Robinson is a DH. He batted 291 with 10 home runs. The windup and the pitch to Billy Cox from Joe McGintney, and that is a 3-5 off the Billy Cox card. 3-5, and that's a single. So Billy Cox leads off the top of the second with a single. And that went right back up the middle. So Billy Cox is on first. And Billy is a D base stealer and a 1 through 14 base runner. So he's going nowhere. And here comes George Shuba. Shuba batted 254 with five home runs, and he's going to try to bunt Billy Cox over. And in basic, we just go off the bunt chart. There is no, again, this should be added in basic, in my opinion, uh, to Strat. They should add a couple of these things in basic. It's not that hard to do. So we're going to try to move the runner over on a sacrifice. So we just rolled two-sided, uh, the two 
six-sided die. The windup in the pitch to Schubert. He squares the bunt, and that is a 12. Batter pops out into a double play. Oh, my Lord. So a horribly botched sacrifice bunt as we rolled a 12. And again, we'll double check as we do with everything. Batter pops out. C into a double play. Lead runner is out. Other runners hold. There are no other runners. So the horrible bunt. And Billy Cox was off on the pitch. As they could have had their signs mixed up. And there are two down now. The Giants needed that. So that's in play. Bunt. Oh, I don't think that's right back. In play. It's a pop out. Out. That's what I forgot to do. Pop up. Next. Done. Billy Cox, what happened to Billy Cox? He was out. Double play. So there's two down. Top of the second. Now Shuba fails to bunt the runner over. And what's worse, he bunted into a double play. And I'll bring up Jim Gilliam. Gilliam walked his first time up. The wind-up and the pitch from Joe McGintney to Jim Gilliam. That is a 3-7. A 3-7 off the Jim Gilliam card. 3-7. 1 through 7 is a single. 8 through 20 is a line-out. It is a 4. So that's a single, and the inning stays alive for Jim uh, for the Dodgers and Jim Gilliam. So Gilliam's at first with two outs, and again, his base running ability is 1 through 16, minus 4, 1 through 12, but plus 2 with two outs, so it's 1 through 14. And here comes Pee Wee Reese, who also walked his first time up, as McGintney had a horrible inning, and he was not aided, helped at all, when Donlin made the error in second, uh, in, in uh, center field, when Ferrillo advanced to second. Bresnahan goes through the signs. McGintney nods his head. The windup and the pitch to Pee Wee Reese. Two outs run at first. And that is a 4-7. A 4-7. 4-7 off the Joe McGintney card. 4-7. Ground ball, second base, X. So we're going to go to the Billy Gilbert. Billy Gilbert, the ball's hit to second. And Gilbert is a two fielder. And that's a 19 on the 20-sided die. So a two fielder and a 19, Gilbert has it, and he throws the first. The side is retired. The Dodgers get none. Go to the bottom of the second, 3 nothing Brooklyn. In play. Out. Ground out. 4-3. to three. Right, so Pee Wee Reese grounds out. Duke Snyder will lead off when the Brooklyn Dodgers next come up. Due up for the Giants, Dan McGann, Sam Mertis, and Bill Donlin, the shortstop. Dan McGann, first baseman, batted 299 with five home runs, 14 triples, and 23 doubles. An extra base machine, he will face Clem Labine, who mow down the Giants 1-2-3. Here's the pitch from Labine to Dan McGann, and that is a 1-9. A 1-9 off the Dan McGann card, 1-9. And that ball is hit to the gap in left center field. No one's going to get to it. It's going to roll to the wall, racing around second and heading to third. On the leadoff triple is Dan McGann. Here come the New York Giants of 1905. 
and I shall be back in a moment. And we are back. Thank you for your patience. So McGann triples. And he's standing at third with no outs. And here comes the left fielder, Sam Mertes. 3-0 Brooklyn Dodgers. We're in the bottom of the second. Mertis in 1905 batted 279, 5 homers, 17 triples, 27 doubles. Again, an extra base hit machine. Labine, ready to work. He deals to Mertis. And that is a 3 7. A 3 7. Off the Mertis card. 3 7. 1 through 14 is a single line shot. Leaping catch by Pee Wee Reese at short robbing. A single and an RBI quickly diving back to third is Dan McGann. What a play by Pee Wee Reese. One through 14 would have been a single. The 20-sided dice with a 17, 15 through 20 is a line out to short. One out, runner at third. Here comes Bill Dolan, the shortstop. 1905, he batted 424, seven homers, four triples, and 20 doubles. He's going to try to knock in the runner, Dan McGann, at third. Labine picks up the sign from Campanella. Campanella sets the target. Here's the pitch to Donlin, and that is a 2-6. Pick up some sticks on the 2-6 off the Donlin card. Two, six, fly ball, left field B. I believe this should score the run. Let's go to the basic fly ball chart. Batter is out on fly out. Runner on third scores. All other runners hold. So it's a sack fly and it's now three to one. So that is a fly ball to left. And that was a two, six. Yep, fly ball to left. So that would be a sack fly. Sacrifice fly. Deep to left. And it's now three to one. There are two outs. Base is empty. 
And here comes a third baseman, Art Devlin, the number seven batter. He batted 246, two homers, seven triples, and 14 doubles. And in the chat, we have Pete Bosox fan, 67. How you doing, my friend? He says, hi, I'll always enjoy some cards and dice, Stratomatic. Yeah, it's a fun game. And I'm using iScore, which is really cool. Um, Combat pa Painter uses it. A couple other people, Itinerary Hobbyist uses it. And I've seen other people talk about it. Take a sip of water. Um, I played a couple of games using it offline. I kind of butchered it a couple of times. But... I think I have it. It's, it's pretty. It's a it's a free download. I recommend it. Uh, so you got to type everything in, but once it's in, it's pretty. It's going to keep all the stats, so I can give you stats, I guess, right off the bat. All right. So that was a sack fly. There are two outs. It's three to one. Here it comes Art Devlin. Thank you for joining us, Pete Bosox fan. Labine's ready to work. He deals to Art Devlin. Here's the pitch, and that is a one nine, a one nine, off the Devlin card one. Nine ground ball to third. Up with it is Billy Cox. He throws to Hodge. Side is retired. The 1903 Giants do get one. 1905 Giants get one. We go to the top of the third. Three to one. 1953 Brooklyn Dodgers. So that was in play. I could have probably just hit out to save a step. I should ground out third. Next. Five to three. Done. Go to the bottom. On the top of the third, excuse me, 3-1 Brooklyn Dodgers. When next the Giants come up, Billy Gilbert will lead off. Due up for the 53 Brooklyn Dodgers, Duke Snyder, Jackie Robinson, and Roy Campanella. Snyder grounded out in his first plate appearance. Looking for something more. Joe McGintney back up on the bump. He's ready to work the windup and the pitch to the Duke of Flatbush. And it is a 3-9 to Duke Snyder off the Duke Snyder card. 3-9. Line drive to second. A step and a dive by Brown. He makes the catch. What a play by George Brown, as that was a split. 1 through 15 would have been a single, but we the 20-sided die was a 20. It's a line drive out to Billy Gilbert at second. What a play by Billy Gilbert on the line drive. So that's one out, and here comes Roger I'm sorry, here comes Jackie Robinson. Robinson doubled the center his first time up. He's the designated hitter. You play with a designated hitter in these tournaments. McGintney picks up the sign from Bresnahan. He kicks and fires at Jackie Robinson, and number 42 gets a 4-4. Four, four. Someone's going to be showing the door on the 4-4. Four, four. We go the Joe McGintney card. 4-4, four, four, ground ball. Third base, Art Devlin, and it's an X, and Devlin is a three defender at third. We rolled a 16 on the 20-sided die. That might be some trouble here. So if Devlin, third base, three defender, and we rolled a 16. And Devlin boots the ball. Three defenders, 16, one base error. So Devlin can't handle a hot shot. And Jackie Robinson will be on. Error. So one out, one on. Jackie Robinson at first. He's an A stealer. Again, we're playing with modified catching hold rules. I like to use that with basic just to give it a little more flavor. And both catchers are one defender, so that's minus four off any steal or base running ability. So Jackie Robinson will stay put. Again, with two outs, you add two back on base running. So here's Roy Campanella. Robinson's at first. 
Campy flew out to shallow center his first time up. McGintney nods his head. He rocks and fires to Campanella. And that is a 3-8 to Roy Campanella off of his card. 3-8 ground ball to short. This will be a double play. As that will be Donlin to Gilbert to McGann. And the side is retired. So that's an out. And is there a double play? Ground out. Oh, we go ground out. There. We're going to say hard. Next. And so we're going to Top, the bottom of the third, excuse me, and it's still 3-1 Dodgers as Campanella bangs into the double play. Due up for the 1905 New York Giants, Gilbert Bowerman in the top of the order, the catcher Roger Bresnahan. When next the Dodgers come up, Carl Ferrillo will lead off. Again, we're using I-score to track. So Here's Billy Gilbert, first at bat. Off Clem Levine. The windup and the pitch to Gilbert. And that is a 3 8 off the Gilbert card. 3 8. And that's a pop up towards third. Billy Cox waving everyone off. And he'll make the catch one away. So one out. And here comes the number nine batter, the designated hitter, Frank Bowerman. He batted 269, three home runs, one triple, eight doubles in 1905 for the New York Giants. Gets his first look at Clem Levine. Levine rocks and fires to Bowerman, and that is a 6-7 off the Levine card. 6-7 ground ball to Pee Wee Reese at short. He is a two defender. We rolled an eight. An eight, and Pee Wee has the play, and he throws the Hodges for out number two. Nice play by Pee Wee Reese. Six to three. So two down, base is empty. Giants trail by three. Top of the order, the catcher, Roger Bresnahan. He grounded out his first time up, a little number. Right back to the pitcher, Labine, who threw him out. Bresnahan awaits the Clem Labine offering. Here's the pitch, homeward bound, and that is a 6-10 off the Labine card. 6-10, 6-10, fly ball left field. Camping under it is Shuba. He makes the catch. The side is retired. We go to the top of the fourth, 3-1. The 1953 Brooklyn Dodgers over the 1905 New York Giants in our mini four championship game, tournament number four. Fly out to Shuba. All right. When next the Giants come up, George Brown will be leading off the inning. Due up for the Brooklyn Dodgers, Carl Ferrillo, Gil Hodges, and Billy Cox to face Joe McGinty. He had a big hiccup inning in the first inning, giving up three runs. One of them was not earned. On the error by the center fielder. So here's Cara Ferrillo. He singled his first time up. McGintney nods his head. Bresnahan sets the target. Here's the pitch to Ferrillo. And that is a 4-4. Four, four. Someone's going to be showing the door. We go to the Joe McGintney card. 4-4 four, four, ground ball. Third base Devlin. Fielding check. Devlin. Is a three third baseman. We rolled a 19. So a 19. And that's a two base error. Wow. So the Giants definitely not helping themselves in the field. The ball goes off his glove. 
and down the left field line. That's a two base error. So Ferrillo will be standing at second. In play, error. Base, second, so Carr Frill is at second, and here comes Gil Hodges, the first baseman. He is 0 for 1, no outs. Hodges will swing away 31 homers with a 302 batting average in 1953. Perillo, if you're thinking about his running ability, 1 through 14. But you got to go minus 4 because there's not 2 outs, so it's 1 through 10. And as we're playing with that modified catcher hold rule. Here's the pitch to Hodges, and that is a 6-7 off the Joe McGitney card. So that's a 6 and a 7 fly ball center field B. That ball's lifted out to Donlin in center. We go to the fly ball chart. The batter is out. Runner on third scores. Other runners hold. So Ferrillo stays put as Hodges flies out to center. So one out. And Billy Cox... Coming to the plate, he singled his first time up. Chance to knock in a run for Billy Cox. Remember, he had 10 homers and a 291 batting average. McGitney works quickly to Cox, and that is a 1 5 off the Cox card. 1 5, and that is a single. Runner advances two bases, so Ferrillo comes racing around from second, and it is 4 to 1 Dodgers as they're taking it to. Their historical rival, the New York Giants. So that's a single. On the 1-5. Center field. Frillo scores. And it's now 4-1. to one. So with one out, Billy Cox is at first. And here comes the number 9 batter, George Shuba. Shuba butted into a double play. No bunting this time for George Shuba. Cox takes his lead at first, being held on by Dan McGann. The windup and the pitch from Joe McGintney. And Shuba will get a 2-8 off of the Shuba card. 2-8 ground ball to short. Up with it is Donlin. He's over to Gilbert on the McGann double play. Side is retired, but the Dodgers get another one. On the one-out single by Billy Cox, we go to the bottom of the fourth. 4-1 four to one Brooklyn. So that's an out. Ground out. Six to four to three. Uh, Billy Cox on first. Out. Double play. So when the Dodgers come back up in the top of the fifth, will be the top of the order. Jim Gillian, so Shuba bangs into his second double play. Due up for the 1905 New York Giants, once again trailing by three, will be George Brown, Mike Donlin, and Dan McGann. Ron Ret Ron Juckett from Retro Sports Network joining us in the task. In the oh God, I can't speak of the English today. Joining us in the chat. Those Dodgers could rake. Yes, they could. How you doing, Mr. Juckett? He had a couple of nice videos up today. How to stream. I watched that one. That was pretty cool. Uh, and then he had another one I haven't watched yet, so i got to watch that one. 
good friend of the channel and member of our wonderful community and content creator. Please check him out if you haven't subscribed. Mr. Ron Jucket of Retro Sports Network. That's Retro Sports Network with Ron Jucket. Also another good friend of the channel. Often in, you'll see him in many of the chats in the community. Peter, Pete Bosox fan. So here's George Brown. He flew out his first time up. He'll face Clem Labine. Labine, again, got the start because of his 2.78 earned run average. He was a starter and reliever for the 53 Brooklyn Dodgers. Here's the pitch to Brown, and that is a 1-8. A 1-8 off the George Brown card. 1-8, and that's a 7, and that's going to find a gap to right center field. And that'll be a leadoff triple for the New York Giants. And that's not a shocker. He had 14 triples in 1905. So Brown triples to lead off the bottom of the fourth. And we're using I score. And we're going to say that went to uh, right center just to mix things up. Line drive hard. Next. And he held up. So there's Brown 90 feet away from cutting the Dodger lead in half. And here comes the number three batter, the center fielder, Mike Donlin. He's committed an error today that cost the Giants a run. Can he make amends for it? 356 batting average, 31 doubles, 16 triples, and 7 homers in 1905. Labine takes a deep breath. Here's the pitch to Mike Donlin. And that is a 2-4. Someone's going to be showing the door on the 2-4. 2-4 off the Donlin card. 2-4 ground ball B to first. So that will be an out, and I think the runner scores on a ground ball B. Ground ball B. If no runners are forced, runners hold. If one or more runners are forced, runner at first is out, batter is safe. Disregard previous results, other runners advance one. So, if no runners are forced, which the runner on third is not forced, he holds. So it's a hard hit ball to Hodges. He takes it to the bag himself. Holding at third is Brown. Ground out. Hard. Next. Three. Done. And Brown holds up. Holds up. So one out. Brown still at third. And here comes Dan McGann. McGann tripled in his first plate appearance. Can he do it again? All he needs is a single here. McGann digs in. Labine kicks and fires, and that is a 1-7 to Dan McGann off of the McGann card. 1-7, and that's a single! And the Giants have cut the lead in half as Brown trots in from third. It's now 4-2, the 53 Dodgers over the 1905 Giants. Single. Up the middle. So it's 4-2. to two. Giants aren't going quietly into the night. One out. One on. That's Dan McGann again. We're playing with the modified hold rule that I use for stealing and base running. And it goes off the catcher's defense. I just It just gives a little more flavor to the basic. Both catchers are one rated defenders. So that's minus four. And there's a modification with two outs on base running. You get a plus two back. So Labine will try to induce a double play ball here. And Mertis... Lined out to Pee Wee Reese, who made that leaping catch to rob him of an RBI in his first plate appearance. McGann takes a lead. Hodges holds him on. Here's the pitch to Sam Mertis. And Clem Labine deals Mertis a 3-9 off the Mertis card. 3-9, and that is a walk. That is a walk. Base on ball. So McGann advances to second. Mertis is at first. Tying runs are on. And striding to the plate, the number six batter, Bill Donlin. And he had a sack fly that produced the first run of the game for the 1905 Giants. He can tie it up here. Did have seven homers, four triples, and 20 doubles with a 242 batting average. Levine takes a deep breath, nods his head. He rocks and delivers to Donlin. 
And that is a 1-7. It's going to be a lucky 7 for one of these teams. 1-7, and that's a walk. So the Dodgers get some bullpen action up now. Another base on balls. Bases are juiced, no outs. Campanella goes out to have a word. With Labine, he's melt, met on the mound with Hodges, 4-2. Lead for the 53 Dodgers of the 1905 New York Giants. And number seven batter, the third baseman, Art Devlin, comes to the plate. He had a two-base error. Can he make amends for that? Labine hoping for the double play ball. Once again, he takes that deep breath. Arms down to his chest. Here's the pitch to Devlin. And that is a 5-5 five, five off the Labine card. 5-5. Five, five. That's going to be a fly ball to right field C. I believe that will be deep enough. No, it will not be deep enough. Runners hold. Batter is out. Let me make sure I looked at that right. 5-5 five, five off the Labine card. 5-5. Five, Five fly ball, right field C. Everyone holds. Two down. Base is still juiced. So Devlin cannot come through. That is an out. Fly out. And it's not deep enough to right. As everyone holds up. So with two outs... Base is juiced. Labine one out away from getting out of this misery. Dodgers bullpen continues to warm. And here comes the number eight batter. Second baseman Billy Gilbert. He also float. He popped up to make um, to Billy Cox at third in his first plate appearance. Gilbert chokes up a little bit on the bat. He had 11 doubles with that 247 batting average in 1905. There's the pitch to Billy Gilbert from Clem Labine. And that is a five. 11, 5, 11 off the Clem Labine card. 5, 11. He strikes him out. Oh, boy. Clem comes through. Mr. Labine strikes out Billy Gilbert. The bases stayed juiced. But the Giants pick up one. We go to the top of the fifth, 4-2. to two. The 1953 Brooklyn Dodgers right now over the 1905 New York Giants. And where's the strikeout? And we'll say strikeout that way. All right, so when next the Giants come up, the number nine batter, Frank Bowerman, will be up. And I will be back in a moment, as I have, to check out my pops. Bear with me a moment. And we are back. Thank you for your patience. All right. Due up in the top of the fifth of the Brooklyn Dodgers. Top of the order. Jim Gilliam followed by Pee Wee Reese and Duke Snyder. Gilliam has walked and singled off Joe McGintney, who's given up four runs. He deals to Jim Gilliam, and that is a 1-2 triple snake eyes. A 1-2 off the Gilliam card, 1-2, ground ball to first. McGann has it. He'll flip underhanded to McGintney, covering the bag. One away. So that goes 3-1. to one. As McGintney was covering the first base bag. One out, and I'll bring up Pee Wee Reese. He has walked and grounded out. Here's the pitch to Pee Wee, and that is a 6-8. A 6-8 off the Joe McGintney card. 6-8-5. 
Line shot past the dive of the second baseman, Gilbert. Gilbert couldn't make that play. So on the 6-8, 1 through 7 is a single. The 20-sided die is a 5. So it's a one-out single for Pee Wee Reese. So Reese is at first. Again, no one's stealing. And the catchers are outstanding. I'm just going to run into an out. And here comes a Duke of Flatbush. Duke Snyder, he is 0 for 2. He is grounded out and smacked a line drive. On a nice diving catch by a step and a dive by Billy Gilbert at second. Here's the pitch from McGitney to Duke Snyder. And that is a 5-8 off the Joe McGintney card. 5-8. He jams him sky high. Pop up. McGintney looking over towards first. Dan McGann going back. He's on the outfield grass. He makes the catch. That's two down. So with two outs, Reese is at first. He'll be off on contact. And with two outs, he gets a plus two. So Pee Wee Reese, running ability, that's only on base running, not on base stealing, is 1 through 16 minus 4 because uh, the Giants catcher, Bresnahan, is a 1 defender. So that goes to 1 through 12, but plus 2 for two outs, it's 1 through 14. And here comes Jackie Robinson, the designated hitter. He has doubled and reached on an error by the third baseman, Art Devlin. Here's the pitch to number 42, and McGintney deals Robinson a 6-7. A 6-7 off the Joe McGintney card. 6-7 fly ball out to center. Dolan is there. He'll make the catch, and the side is retired. We go to the bottom of the fifth, 4-2, the 1953 Brooklyn Dodgers over the 1905 New York Giants. When next the Dodgers come up, Roy Campanello will be leading off. We go back to the chat. Ron says he is doing well. That's what we like to hear. So due up for the 1905 Dodgers, uh, Giants, excuse me, trailing by two. The designated hitter, Frank Bowerman, in the top of the order, Bresnahan and Brown. Frank Bowerman grounded out. Just short his first time up as Pee Wee Reese threw him out. Labine had some trouble last inning. Let's see how long the Dodgers stick with him. He's ready to work to Bowerman, though. Here's the pitch. And that is a 212 off the Bowerman card. 212. Line shot right at the third baseman, Billy Cox. He snares it in self defense, one away. Bowerman hit that on the screws, but right at Billy Cox. Made a self-defense catch. One down. Okay, I do like this eye score. So top of the order now, Roger Bresnahan, the catcher. He's 0 for 2. He's grounded out and flown out. Levine nods his head. Campanella sets the target. Here's the pitch to Campy's counterpart, Bresnahan. And that is a 1-11, a 1-11 off the Bresnahan card. 1-11, ground ball, right back to Levine. He knocks it down, picks it up, throws to Hodges, two down. So with two outs, base is empty. Here comes George Brown. He's one for two. He tripled in his last at-bat. Prior to that, he popped out. To the second baseman, Jim Gillian. Brown chokes up on the bat just a bit. Labine kicks and fires, and that is a 1-6 to Brown off of his card. 1-6. Line shot. Leaping in the air is Gilliam, and the side is retired. What a catch by Jim Gilliam. There are some hard-hit balls in that inning, but nothing to show for the 1905 Giants. Go 
over the top of the six, still four to three Dodgers. When next the 1905 Giants come to bat, Mike Donlin will lead off. Due up for the 1953 Brooklyn Dodgers with a four to two lead. Roy Campanella, Carl Frillo, and Gil Hodges. Roy Campanella is 0 for 2. Now getting these back up on the bump. The windup and the pitch to Campy, and Campanella is dealt a 1-7, a 2-7, excuse me, a 2-7 off the Campanella card. 2-7, and that's a walk. Walks will come back to haunt you, my friend. And that's a base on Bones. So Campy's at first. And here comes Cara Ferrillo. He's one for two. He singled and reached on a two-base error when Devlin let the ball go off his glove down the left field line. Ferrillo had 21 homers in 53 with a 344 batting average. McGann holding on camping. McGinney takes a peek, and now he deals to Cara Ferrillo, and that is a 4-6 off the Joe McGinney card. Four, six, and that's a strikeout of Cara Frillo. Big swing and a miss. So one out, one on, four to two Dodgers, and here comes the first baseman for Brooklyn, Gil Hodges. He's 0 for 2. He has ground out and flown out. Here's the pitch to Gil Hodges from Joe McGitney, and that is a 2-11, 2-11, and that's a fly ball left field. Waiting for it to come down. Having a cup of coffee is Sam Mertis. Two down, quickly retreating back to first is Roy Campanella. So with two outs, Campanella will be off on contact. Here comes Billy Cox. He is two for two and has played stellar third base. He has singled twice. Campanella will be off and running on contact. McGintney hoping to get Cox for the first time. He kicks and deals to Billy Cox, and that is a 4-6 off the Joe McGintney card. 4-6. He strikes him out. Looking. Side is retired. We go to the bottom of the six. 4-2 Brooklyn Dodgers. When next the Dodgers come up, it'll be George Shuba leading things off. Due up for the 1905 Giants. Again, this is our Mini Four Tournament Championship game. The winner will advance to the box of good, as we call it. Already advancing in the first three tournaments. In Tournament 1, the 27 Yankees won. In Tournament 2, the 86 Mets won. And in Tournament 3, the 81 Dodgers won. So who shall go to the box of good and advance to further tournament play? We shall find out. So here's Mike Donlin. He's 0 for 2. He's grounded out twice. Levine looks in, nods his head. Campanella sets a target. Here's the pitch to Donlin, and that is a 6-8 off the Clem Levine card. 6-8 line shot. Hodges makes a backhanded catch. What a play by Gil Hodges. Robbing extra bases from Mike Donlin. One away. So with one out, no one on, stepping to the plate is Dan McGann. He is two for two. He has tripled and singled. The Giants trail by two. The windup and the pitch to McGann. And that is a 1-7 that Clem Labine deals in 1-7. And that's a single to center right back through the wicket to Clem. And Dan McGann's now three for three. So one out, McGann is at first. One through 12, base runner. He's, he, though he is an ace stealer, which is interesting. He's not going anywhere, though. And here comes Bill Donlin, the shortstop. He is lined out to Pee Wee Reese and walked. I'm sorry, Sam Mertis. As the card slips, Sam Murchis, the left fielder. 
One out, one on. Levine will try to induce a double play ball. He works quickly to Mertis, and that is a 1-6. One, 1-6, six. One, six. pick up some sticks off the Mertis card. 1-6. And that ball is going to be hit to the gap. But cutting it off in center field is Snyder. It's a single, and advancing to third is Dan McGann. Here come the Giants. As it was a split, one through two would have been a double, and McGann would have scored as there's two stars there, but it's a single with two stars, three through 20, and the 20-sided die was a 15. So that's a single. So first and third with one out. And here comes Bill Donlin, the shortstop. He has a sack fly with a ribby, and he walked his last at-bat. Tying run at first, and Sam Murtis. Dan McGann's at third, and Donlin's at the plate. And again, Campanella goes out to have a word with Labine. Dodgers, let's look at some pitchers here. They all had high ERAs. I mean... Russ Meyer, 15 and 5, 4.57 earned run average. Carl Erskine won game one, but he could come in to pitch out of the pen. There has been some days off. 3 5 3, but I don't think we'll do that. Then we have Bob Milken, 3.36. He would probably be the next one to come in. Jim Hughes, 4 and 3, 3.45. Billy Lowe's, 14-8, 4.53. As Ron Juckett from Retro Sports Network said, the Dodgers could rake. Obviously, they could because these ERAs stink. And this is when they could pitch. Preacher Rowe, 11-3, and, and his ERA, 4.36. Not good, not good. Johnny Padres, 9-4. and four. Uh, Again, a lot of these guys, were they started and they pitched in relief. 4.23. Yeah, not going to see the light of day. So those are our pitchers. It's not really. I think we'd go with Bob, Bob Milken, at the three three six, and then Jim Hughes at the three four five. Just look at their walks and stuff. But I think Milken would be the next in. But we're gonna have Clem LeBlind. He had the best ERA with the cards I have, two point seven eight. That's why we started him. All right. So first and third, one out, tying run at first. Sam Mertis and his running ability. Sam Mertis. He's a double A stealer, 1 through 17. So a double A trying to steal second. Oh, we might have to think about this. Minus is 1 through 17. Minus 4 is 1 through 13. Uh, oof. Down 2, 1 out. We're, we're not, he'll stay put. So here's Billy Donlin, 242 batting average. And sack fly and a walk. Mertis is going to try to steal second, get himself in scoring position. So one, he's a double-A base stealer. We're, uh, Campanella, one defender at catcher. So that's a minus four with the hold rule we're playing. So we go minus four. So that's one through 13. Here's a throw from Campy. It's a 12! So he slides in safely. He's in scoring position. So here come the Giants playing that go-go baseball, what would later be known as Billy Ball, from Billy Martin at, in the Oakland. He was with Oakland. So how do I do a steal? I guess we go in play. How do you do a steal? In play. Safe. Double error. Hmm, nope, that's not the way to do it. Oh, maybe we have to do... How do you do a steal? 
Ball would be in play, but does that mean no? Catcher, sack, fly, sacrifice, for wild pitch, third. Mm, walk, single, homer, bunt. We're using I score. Okay, so it must not be that. Let's go back. Mertis. Oh, you just click on. Okay, so what you do. All right, so if you ever first time, I'm using I score. So Mert is stolen. So he's his name's at first. So you just you put your your click on it. You know you put your finger on that and you go stolen base. You indicated the runner stole the same. Oh okay no no okay no okay so second you click on second and then do stolen base. Okay cool. Now we know how to do that. Didn't come up in the little exhibition games I played using this. All right so one out tying runs at second now for Donlin again. No official at bat. Sack flying a walk. Can Bill Donlin be a hero? Clem Levine hopes not. Here's the pitch to Donlin. And that is a 3-6 off the Donlin card. 3-6, and he will be a hero. That's a single to center. A single to center. And now we have to make a decision here. The runner, McGann, scores from third. It's 4 to three, we can wave Murtis around because there's no stars there. And it's a single to center. Minus four. Because if there were two outs, we go two back. So it's one through 13 again. They're going to wave him around on deck. Is Devlin. They're going to wave him around. Here's a throw from Snyder. And it's a nine. He scores. We have a 4-4 four, four ball game. A clutch. Single by Bill Donlin. He knocks in two. So the stolen base and the single produces a bumper crop of fruit. Two runs score. It's 4-4 four, four here in the bottom of the six with one out. And we're going to say Donlin holds at first. I don't think we runners advance. They don't have anything with that. Hit and run, stealing ground balls. Yeah, so we're just going to say he holds at first. So excited he just stayed at first. 4-4 four, four ball game, so it's in play. What a clutch hit by Bill Donald. That's a single to center. And we're going to say that was a soft line drive. So it bloops in. Pop-up, we'll call it a pop-up. Soft pop-up to center. Yeah, line drive sounds better. Uh, McGann scores. And Mertes scores from second. And Donlin holds up at first. So we have a 4-4 ball game. And Clem LeBlanc, his day could be done. Art Devlin's coming up. Devlin's 0 for 2. We're going to give LeBlanc one more batter because he got him twice. He's grounded out and flown out. Hodges holds on down. And here's the pitch to Art Devlin. And that is a 5-6 off the Le, uh, LeBlanc card. 5-6. That's a pop-up. First base side, Hodges calling for it for out number two. So two outs, runner at first. And striding to the plate is Billy Gilbert, the second baseman. Gilbert has flown out and struck out. Donlin will be off on contact. Levine kicks and fire to Billy Gilbert. And that is a 2-11 off the Gilbert card. 2-11 ground ball to short. Reese is up with it. And he will flip to Gilliam for the force out. And the side is retired. But the Giants get two on the clutch one out single. After the stolen base by Mertis. And we have a tie ball game 4-4. Round out. Hard. Right. 
So we go to the top of the seventh, 4-4 ball game, and I think Labine will be done. When next the Giants come up, it will be Frank Bowerman leading things off. 4-4, what a game, what a game. Dave Little has joined us. He had his first stream, sports stream game, uh, basketball last night, early this morning. It was the Milwaukee Bucks and the New York Knicks from the early 70s. Check it out. I was there. It was lots of fun. Oh, original Grognard helped them out with settings. That's what this community is all about, helping out one another. And listening to Al Red Sox fans' idiotic jokes. Oh, they're funny. You know they're funny. Anyway. So hello to Dave Little. And Pete Bosox fan is still here. Good for him. Thank you, Pete. I'm going a little slower than normal. I go slow, but I'm using this uh, eye score. I really like it. So, And some things come up that I didn't have in my little practice games when I was using it. So I was like, how do I do this? <laughs> All right. So it's a 4-4 ball game. Joe McGitney back out on the mound. This has been a workmanlike performance, as they would say. He's not been stellar. And he will face George Shuba. Then the top of the order for the 53 Dodgers, Gilliam and Pee Wee Reese. George Shuba is 0 for 2. He's flown out and grounded out. Here comes the Joe McGintney offering. And Shuba gets a 4-4. Who's going to be shown the door on the 4-4? Ground ball to third base. Art Devlin, he's already butchered a couple of balls there. Devlin is a 3 defender. And the 20-sided dice roll is a 3. So third base, basic fielding chart. It's a three and a three, and that's a single as he cannot make the play as a shoddy defense comes into play once again. And Shuba singles. He's the go-ahead run at first. Single. So Shuba's at first. If you're thinking about his base running ability, he's slow. 1 through 12. That's slow in this game. So Shuba's at first. He's not going anywhere. He's an E-base stealer. Here's Jim Gilliam. Gilliam, the second baseman, has walked, singled, and grounded out. He's 1 for 2. McGintney hoping for a double play ball. The windup and the pitch to Jim Gilliam. And the red die freaking jumped. It jumped, and where did it go? We just set up our computer room differently, and you would know it rolled right under that. Of course it did. So we'll take a quick look as the red die is making a run for freedom. For freedom, he says. But the only freedom is to come back. Come back here, red die. Where are you, red die, you little bastard? I have the backup die all prepared, but I will not let you escape. There is no escape from our Red Sox fan. I will find you eventually, and you will be punished just like GGO. You will play, because that's what you get paid for, to roll the damn die. And son of a gun, he is well hidden. Oh boy, he's got a good hiding place, that little bastard. Oh, I found you, you little bastard. Right there. You son of a... Oh, now he now escaped again. Son of a bitch. He's a quick one. Oh, God. Where did you go now? Where did you go now? you got to be kidding me. What are the odds of that thing actually going right between... Holy crap. I couldn't do that in a million years. I couldn't do that if they paid me. All right. Well, I'll get you. I'll get you, you little bastard. But we go to the backup dies. So this die... Oh, we had a five there. So it's going to be an eight. Yeah. We went to this... Those dies are from the mid-80s to uh, early 2000s. You can tell they're a little bigger, you know, a little beefed up. So that's a 5-8. I don't even remember who's up anymore. Bresnahan. No, Gilliam. 5-8, sorry. 5-8 on the McGitney card. 5-8. That's a pop-up to first as Gilliam's jammed. And McGann will make the catch. As that's a pop out. One out. And we'll take Mr. And we'll go big die. 
so one out, one on, and here comes Pee Wee Reese, the Dodgers shortstop, 4-4 ball game, top of the seventh, Pee Wee's one for two, a walk, a ground out, and a single. As Ron Juckett, I like it, says, it rolled off the table and off the floor, my poor red die, it rolled out the door. I love it, I love it, Ron Juckett. He is the Dr. Seuss of our community. Once again, a little poem from Ron Juckett. It rolled off the table and off to the floor. My poor red die, it rolled out the door. As Dave Little says, Ron, I can hear you singing. And Ron's laughing. Actually, I found him and then I dropped him again. He jumped right out of my hands and he's... Uh, he's I set up this new... He, I don't even know how the hell it got... It's in. I mean, I can get him eventually. Oh, I'm going to get the little bastard. All right, so we've gone to the steroid die. All right, back to the ball game. Enough jocularity, as they would say. Who said that? Who said jocularity in MASH? Come on, someone knows this in the chat. All right, so here comes Pee Wee Reese, one for two. The pitch from McGinty, runner at first, one out. 4-4 four, four ball game, and that is a 2-10. Off the Pee Wee Reese card, 2-10, and that's a walk. And McGinty has had trouble with his control, so Shuba advances to second. He's the go-ahead run with one out. And that's in play. Base on balls. So Shuba's at second, and he's not very speedy. You can, in fact, say he is slow. Pee Wee Reese is at first. One out. McGintney hoping to induce a double play ball. Christy Mathewson getting up in the pen for the 1905 Giants. He won game one of our mini four tournament. He's prepared to pitch in relief. And here comes the Duke of Flatbush, Duke Snyder. The Duke, 0 for 3. McGintney wants to make him 0 for 4. One out, two on. The windup and the pitch to Duke Snyder. And that is a 2-9 off the Snyder card. 2-9. 2-9. And that ball is going, going, gone. That ball is crushed to center. And just like that, night turns into day. There is a ton of joy for the Dodgers fans who have traveled. Here do I believe the Polo Grounds. I don't know if the Giants were playing in the Polo Grounds in 1905, but we're going to say the Polo Grounds. And it's now on the three-run blast by Duke Snyder. Those steroid dice sure helped out. He did have 42 home runs, though, in 1953. And we got that two column. Lots of homers there. And it is now 7-4. to four, And Joe McGintney will say no more. Wow, Duke Snyder crushed it to dead center. So, in play, first home run I'll have to mark on high score. And where's a crush shot? And it's now 7-4. to four With one out. McGintney talking to Bresnahan and the coach. And they're going to keep him in. Matthewson is ready. Here's Jackie Robinson, number 42, is one for three. He's doubled, reached out an error, and flown out to center. The windup man, the pitch to Robinson, and that is a five. I'm sorry, a, yeah, a five eight off the Joe McGitney card. Five eight. He jammed him. He came high and tight. That's a pop up once again to Dan McGann at first, and that's out number two. On the pop out. So two outs, base is empty. Striding the plate, the catcher, Roy Campy Campanella. He has walked in his prior at bat. Before that, he's grounded out and flown out. 0 for 2 for Campy. Duke Snyder with a huge blast. Off Joe McGintney. Here's the pitch to Campanella from McGintney. McGintney. God, I hate that name. Just don't, can't pronounce it. I don't know why. And that is a 3-3 three, three off the Campanella card. 3-3. Three, three. What will it be? A hard ground ball to Donlin. He's up with it. Throws him again. The side is retired, but the damage is done. 
on the Mammoth Blast by Duke Snyder. And the visiting 1953 Brooklyn Dodgers take a three-run lead, 7-4. to four. Say no more. We go to the bottom of seventh. So Campy grounds hard to down them. Out. Ground out. Hard. Short. 63. Done. All right. Bottom of the seventh. When next the Dodgers come up in the top of the eighth, Carl Farrell will be leading off. Will they still have a lead, or can the Giants rally once again? USA Patriot 4163 has joined us in the chat along with Westbrook Cards 12. Hope everyone's doing well. The original Grognard who helped out uh, Dave Little. Hats off. Tip of the cap to the original Grognard. I tried. Then I actually did a Google Hangout thinking they were going to come back on and help explain it. But they did it through Discord. And it was that's what you have to do. You have to talk it out because that's the only way you can figure it. And Tribes fan put up a video. I gotta check that out. His second video of his ninth. Oh God, I forgot again. His 2016 Twins playthrough, I believe. And it's his second update video. All right, here come the 1905 Giants. And do I want to stick with Clem Labine? I no, but I'm petrified of making a change in high school. <laughs> Isn't that awful? But we can't. I don't think they would stick with Clem Labine. His 2.78 earned run average has not stood up. Though he's given up three runs, and he's facing Bowerman. Bowerman's 0 for 2, ground out line. You know what? We're going to let him face Bowerman. Our pen is ready. Levine gets a reprieve from the governor. That three-run homer by Duke Snyder. Here's the pitch to Bowerman, the designated hitter, and that is a 3-7. Oh, boy. 3-7, hard hit ball to P.B. Reese, going to his left, snares it, throws one hopper. Hodge digs it out. One away. Nice play all the way around. That's a ground out. Yeah, it's six to three. Nice play by Hodges. Scooping it out of the dirt. One away. Here in the bottom of the seventh. The 1905 Giants trail by three. Seven to four. Thanks to that Duke Snyder homer in the top of the seventh. Three run blast. Top of the order. And the catcher, Roger Bresnahan, he is 0 for 3. Labine has had his number. Let's see if Bresnahan can lose Labine's number. Here's the pitch to Roger Bresnahan, and that is a 2-6 off the Bresnahan card. 2-6. Two, 2-6. Six. Two, six. That's a single, and that's it for Mr. Clem Labine. So that is a single. Line shot to center. Single, line drive, hard, center. So Bresnahan's at first, and now we will go with the man with the lowest ERA, Bob Milken, Milliken, 8-4 and four with a 3.36 earned run average, struck out 65, walked 42. Oh, boy. Johnny Padres. Struck out 82, walked 64. His ERA is a, of almost a full point higher. I'm going with Bob Milliken. I'm going to go with the ERA guys. All right, so now this will be an adventure for Al Red Sox fan. We have to switch pitchers. At least it's not a position player. All right, so we're using I score. Let's look at this. All right, it's got to be the same way you do a pinch hitter. I did that before. Oh, do I go to lineups? I think. Well, maybe I just click on Clem Labine. Let's just do that. Oh, you do! Yay! All right, now we got to find the pitcher. We're going with Bob Milliken. All right, where are you, Bob Milliken? There you are, Bob Milliken. All right, so... Do I just click on Bob Milliken? Okay. I want him to go in the game. All right. That didn't work. All right. Let's go back before we foobar this. Defense. I want him to go in the game. Oh, select. Select player to replace Clamp. Okay, okay. I want this guy. Did we do it? 
Oh, because I don't have any... Uh, I'm going to have to give these guys numbers. Because I can't... Everyone's number is zero. But I think I did it. Um, select player to... Oh, yeah, yeah, Bob Milliken. Bob Milliken is in the game now. So, save. Yes, we did it! All right, so all you do is you click on that. That makes perfectly good sense. Well, you just click on the name. Bob Milliken's now in. Awesome sauce. I like this ice score a lot. Highly recommend it, and I'm horrible at it. All right, so Bob Milliken, 8-4 in 1953 with a 3.36 earned run average. Striking out 65, walking 42. That kind of concerns me, the 42 walks, but... All right, so there is one out. Roger Bresnahan's at first, and stepping in the plate, George Brown, and he was one for three off Clem Le Labine. Labine can only win it. He cannot lose it. He is pitcher of record for the Dodgers. Okay, so Bresnahan is on. Flip that card. Bobby Cantalano has joined us in the chat. How are you doing, my friend? Hope all is well. Westbrook cards, as I stated, 12 is in there. Bobby says she's doing well. Excellent. Everyone's saying hello to Bobby. And remember to check out Westbrook Cards 12. Please check out that channel. And Ron Juckett and all the other content creators like the original Grognar, Dave Little. Bobby, that, she, she goes on other people's channels. I don't think... Do you do anything solo or on your channel? Tribes fan, check him out. Check out USA Patriot 416 Military Strategy. All right, back to the ball game. Thank you, everyone, for taking some time out. I like this I score. I highly recommend it. I have it on my Kindle, and you can download it on anything. I really like this. We've lost the red die. That was an adventure. I know where the little bastard is. He's in under that. I put up this little shelf to put my computer up higher, and he's. I don't know how he got wedged in as I'm pointing. You can't even see. He got wedged in between the thing there. I don't even know how he got there. I'll get him, though. So we've gone to the steroid die. These guys are from the steroid era, and you can see the difference from the 50s to the 1905 era die, see? And then we've gone steroid era. I don't know if you can actually see the freaking die, but you should be able to see it. Little joke there, little jocularity. Who said that? Who said jocularity on MASH? I didn't see an answer yet. All right, here we go. George Brown at the plate. One out, one on. The Giants of 1905 trail 7 to 4 over the 53 Brooklyn Dodgers thanks to that Duke Snyder, the Duke of Flatbush, three run homer. Here's the pitch from Bob Milliken to George Brown. Will he make Brown look like a clown? We shall see. That is a 3 7 off the George Brown card. 3 7 ground ball to first B. And I believe they get the lead runner on that. Batter. No, Batter is out at first. If no runners are forced, runner holds. If one or more runners are forced, runner at first is out, batter is safe. Yeah, so I'm right. Batter. Batter is out at first. If one or more runners are forced, runner at first is out, batter is safe. Batter is out. Oh, if no one's on. Got it. Got it. So they get the runner at second. They don't turn two. Runner at first is out, batter is safe. All right, so it's a fielder's choice. As that was a 3-7 off the George Brown card. 3-7, ground ball to first. So we tried to turn two. So Hodges goes to Reese. That's an out. So that would be a ground out. Or would, would you call that a fielder's choice? Ah, we're going to say ground out. Ah, I think it's a fielder's choice. Back. Out. Do they give us a fielder's choice? No. It's a field. We're just going to call it. We're going to call it a ground out. I'm not going to jerk around with that too much. So, ball was hit here. They tried to turn two. So that went... Three to six. Done. And now they're going to ask, what happened to Bresnahan? He was out. Um, at second. Force out. Okay, cool. So you do that. So two outs. 
No! It's a force out! Oh boy, undo that. That's wrong. Alright. Undo. Thank God for undo. Let's try this again. Out. The ground ball. There's got to be a fielder's choice on here. Fan interference. Runner interference. Drop. Th they don't have fielder's choice though. Oh, maybe we go safe. Safe. Safe is your... Ah, fielder's choice, so it's under safe. Makes sense. Badger's safe. Fielder's choice, so that's under safe. Duh. Ball hit to Hodges. So that went three to six. Done. Bresnahan. What happened to the runner on first base? I just told you what happened to the runner on first base. He's out at second. Out. Force out. Safe. Held up. All right. We did it right. All right. Two outs, Browns at first. So if you ever have to do a fielder's choice using I score, you go to safe. Don't go to ground out. I mean, because the batter, they're asking what happened to the batter. So he's safe, and then you, they ask what happens to the runner and stuff like that. So two outs in the top of the order. No, oh, the number three batter, excuse me. That was Mike Donlin. Runner will be off on contact, and that's George Brown at first. Still 7-4 to four Dodgers. Here's the pitch from Milliken to Donlin. That's a 6-4. Off the Milliken card, 6 Four, fly ball to center. Going back a bit is Snyder. He makes the catch, and the side is retired. That's an out, fly out, center, medium, next, S Snyder, good. We go to the top of the eighth, seven to four. I highly recommend this I score. It's free, and it's awesome. Hope everyone's enjoying the chat. And my clunky ball game. When next the Giants come up, hopefully only down three if you're a Giants fan, Dan McGann will be up. Due up for the Brooklyn Dodgers, Carl Ferrillo, Gil Hodges, and Billy Cox. Billy Cox has had a fine game defensively and at the plate for the Dodgers. Here's Carl Ferrillo, one for three, singled, reached on air, and struck out. Joe McGinty still on the mound. Here's the pitch to Ferrillo. And that is a 2-7 to Carl Ferrillo off of his card. 2-7. Ground ball to short. Donlin's up with it. He throws them again. One down. Ground out. And like when you do this, you just you go, you hit, you you put you tap the shortstop, and then you tap first, and it gives you six to three, and you click done. Six to three. He's out. Beautiful. I like it, and it keeps the, the stats for you. So here's Gil Hodges, the first baseman. He's 0 for 3. He wants to get off the schneid. McGintney rocks and fires to Hodges, and that's a 1-3. What will it be? We shall see a 1-3 ground ball to Art Devlin at 30. Knocks it down, picks it up, throws him again in the dirt. McGann scoops it out. Two away. Oh, well, my Lord, was that an adventure. As Devlin has been an adventure at third. That was a hard-hit grounder. At least he knocked it down. So two outs, base is empty, and here comes Billy Cox. He's two for three. I'm sorry, I thought I think I said three for three. He singled twice and struck out. Can he keep the inning alive for Mr. George Shuba, who's knocked into two double plays? Top of the eighth, seven to four. The 1953 Brooklyn Dodgers over the 1905 New York Giants in our mini four tournament number four championship game. The winner would go into the box of good. Prior mini three tournament winners: the 27 Yankees, 86 Mets, and 81 Dodgers. All teams, New York or formerly New York, and one of these teams will join them, which is a New York team. Either way, it's a New York state of mind. In that box of good. Here's the pitch to Billy Cox from Joe McGintney. And that is a 2-7. 2-7. 
off the Billy Cox card. Two, seven. He's jammed, popped up sky high at third. Art Devlin struggling, struggling with it. He makes the catch, and the side is retired. It's a pop up. We go to the top, uh, the bottom of the eighth, excuse me, bottom of the eighth, seven to four. Brooklyn Dodgers over the New York Giants. When next, the Dodgers come up in the top of the ninth, they'll be the number nine batter, the left fielder, George Shuba, leading off. And Bob Milken back out on the mound. He'll face Dan McGann, Sam Mertes, and Bill Donlin. Giants need to rally one more time. One more time if you're a Giants fan. Here's the pitch to Dan McGann from Bob Milliken, and that is a 3-4. Who's going to see the door on the 3-4? 3-4, ground ball back to Milliken. He knocks it down, picks it up, throws the first, one away. Nice play. That was a hard hit ground ball slated to go up the middle. Got his glove on it. So there's one down. As that goes, Milliken to Hodges. And here comes Sam Mertes. He's one for two. He has singled, walked, and smacked into a line drive out. He has a stolen base and has scored. Needs to get on here. Milliken looks in at Campanella. Nods his head. The windup and the pitch of Sam Mertes. And that is a 3-7. 3-7. Off the Mertis card, 3-7, 1 through 14 is a single, line shot, race, leaps, he makes the catch! 15 through 20 is an out, 20 sided die is a 19, Pee Wee Reese does it again to a giant batter, robs him of a base hit. What a play by Pee Wee, Pee Wee showing some hops, he got up there. So two outs, base is empty. And here comes Bill Donlin. He has a sack, fly, a walk, and a single. He's knocked in three runs. Now he just needs to move the line with two outs and the base is empty. Milliken has other ideas. Here's the pitch to Bill Donlin. And that is a 5-3 off the Milliken card. 5-3, what will it be? We shall see on the 5-3. Ground ball to Pee Wee Reese at short. And it's an X, so we'll have to go to the fielding chart. The 20-sided die is a 6. And Pee Wee Reese at short is a 2 defender. So it's a 6. And we go to the 2 column. Reese comes up with it, throws to Hodges. The side is retired. Nice play by Pee Wee. Flashing the leather that inning. Six to three. We go to the top of the ninth. Dodgers hold a three-run lead. Thanks to that three-run homer in the top of the seventh by Duke Snyder, the Duke of Flatbush. In the bottom of the ninth, leading off for the Giants will be Art Devlin. So Joe McGinty on the mound. Not a stellar day for Joe. Seven runs. Most of them were earned, though not all. He'll face George Shuba in the top of the order, Gilliam and Pee Wee Reese. George Shuba has been god-awful. He has bunted into a double play and grounded into a double play. And he did single, though. With the help from God, he did find a single. All right. McGintney deals to Shuba. Wants a quick 1-2-3 inning, and that is a 4-5 to Shuba. 4-5 off the Joe McGintney card. 4-5 ground ball to second. Billy Gilbert ranging to his left backhands. It throws them again. One away. So with one out, no one on. Top of the order, Jim Gilliam, the second baseman. One for three. He has flown out, ground out, singled, and walked. Gilliam awaits the McGintney offering. Pitch homeward bound. Gilliam has dealt a 5-7 off the Joe McGintney card. 5-7, ground ball to short. And their shortstop is Bill Donlin, and that's going to be an X. So we go to the fielding chart, 
And Donlin, the shortstop, is a two defender. The 20-sided die is a five. So five, two, he has it. Fields it cleanly, throws him again, two down. The ground out. Six to three. So two outs, base is empty. And here comes Pee Wee Reese. Reese one for two. He's walked, grounded out, singled, and walked. And my God, as he flashed the leather at short for the 53 Brooklyn Dodgers. Pee Wee digs in. McGintney offering homeward bound. Here's the pitch to Pee Wee Reese. That is a 5 8. Pee Wee Reese hoping for it to be great. 5 8. It's not great. It's a jam shot. Pop up towards first. Outfield grass is Dan McGann. He squeezes it, and that's out number three. We go to the bottom of the ninth. The Giants need three to tie, four to win. It's seven to four. The 53 Brooklyn Dodgers over the 1905 New York Giants. The winner advances to the box of good, as they would have won tournament number mini tournament number four championship. It's a pop out. Alrighty, the bottom of the ninth. Last call. Last call for alcohol. At two, you're through. And that's what the Dodgers are hoping. And they don't want to go to the top of the tenth. But if they do, Duke Snyder will be leading things off. And so Bob Milliken. Jim Hughes is ready. But they're going to stick with Milliken. He will face... Art Devlin, Billy Gilbert, and Frank Bowerman, the bottom third of this Giants order. Art Devlin has been very shaky at third, and he's 0 for 3. He's grounded out and flown out twice. Milliken wants to make quick work out of Devlin. He kicks and deals to Art Devlin, and that is a 6-2. 6, -two. six -two. Off the Milliken card. 6-2, fly ball, out to right, and Carl Ferrillo. Ferrillo, an excellent defender. He's a 1. We rolled a 12. So let's go to the basic fielding chart for outfielders. 1, 12. That's catchers. And that's an out. Running catch by Carl Ferrillo. Towards the line. 1 down. The Brooklyn Dodgers, 2 outs away. From a very prestigious mini four tournament four championship victory. Nice running catch by Carl Frillo. One out, no one on. And here comes Billy Gilbert. He's 0 for 3. Flown out, struck out, and grounded out. Milliken nods his head. Campanella sets a target. Here's a pitch to Billy Gilbert. And that is a 5-11 off the Milliken card. 5-11. It's a play for Campanella. And Campanella's a one defender. And we rolled a three. Oh, boy. Let's see what happens here. One defender and a three. It's a pass ball. No one's on base. Followed by a pop-out. So he pops out to Campanella. I guess I didn't have to read the pass ball, but I was reading the thing. So there's two down. As Milliken forces the pop out by Gilbert. And now, the last hope falls to Frank Bowerman, the designated hitter. The number nine batter, Bowerman, 269 batting average in 1905. Three homers, one triple, and a double. Just needs to move the line to the top of the order. He's 0 for 3. He is ground out, lined out, and ground out. Bowerman needs to get on by any means necessary. Will he lean into a pitch? Will he pull a bad news bears? We shall see. The windup and the pitch from Milliken to Bowerman. And it is a 6-8. Who will it be great for on the 6-8? Six, 6-8. Eight? Six, eight. Jam shot. Pop up Pee Wee Reese on the outfield grass. Calling 40 makes the catch. And the 1953 Brooklyn Dodgers are celebrating here at the Polo Grounds. 
And there is no joy in Mudville for the 1905 Giants fans. The Dodgers partying like it's 1999 have advanced to the box of good with a 7-4 victory. And Pee Wee Reese and the rest of the Dodgers jumping up and down, waving their hands in the air just like they don't care. There'll be some partying in the borough of Brooklyn. The Dodgers win over their much-hated rivals, the Giants, 7-4. to four. They have shut the door on the 1905 New York Giants, Joe McGinty. All right, so that's an out. And that was a pop-out. P.V. Reese. And this ball game's done. Cool. I don't know how to get the box score. <laughs> so, that was 7-4. to four. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And we did it under two freaking hours. That's incredible for me, using a new technology. As Bobby Kentlaw says, LOL, Al, keeps getting songs in my head. Oh, that's what I do. I put songs in people's heads. Let's go to the chat quick before we say thank you. And I kind of want to look at the box score, how to do it, but... I don't want to keep you people any longer in the chat. You've, have, you've all been very kind and nice. And we're using iScore, and I highly recommend it if you're a baseball or softball fan. It's pretty cool. And you just have to put the players' names in yourself, punch them in, but you'd have to write it out anyway. I didn't see anything where you could import anything from Baseball Reference, which would be kind of cool. But if you downloaded it on your computer, you could possibly then load it up on your tablet or whatever you're using so once again the 1953 dodgers powered on the three-run homer in the top of the seventh by the duke of flatbush duke snyder advanced with a seven to four victory over their much hated ancient rivals the 1905 new york giants they will go to the box of good along with already there the 27 yankees 86 mets and 81 la dodgers all right let's say thank you to bobby cantalano Thank you to Dave Little. Check out his channel. Thank you to Retro Sports Network. That's Uncle Ron Juckett. You know. Check him out. And we scroll up. The original Grognard Tribes fan. Check out those wonderful channels. Tribes fan's just uh, given an update on his twins replay using Stratomatic Card and Dice. Westbrook Cards 12. Check him out. USA Patriot 4163 strategy, military strategy, like the original Grognard. Original Grognard also has wrestling, sports, you name it, he has it. And you get to see his huge catfish, who's doubling as a great white shark. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Also thank you to Pete Bosox fan 67 I'm sensing I forgot someone. I keep scrolling up and down, and I think I forgot someone. And if I did, I apologize. I'm almost... Bobby Tribes. Well, thank you to each and every one of you. I hope I got you all. And I gotta I gotta get the red die who's in hiding under the shelf, and I'm getting a little bastard. As he says, I want to be free like Gigio. Shut up. Back to work. Anyway. Brooklyn Dodgers 7 from 1953. The 1905 New York Giants 4. They advanced to the mini four championship victory and the box of good. Once again, teams who have advanced, the 27 Yankees, the 86 Mets, and the 81 Los Angeles Dodgers. This is now Red Sox fan saying, help me catch my red dye. And health and happiness. Till next time, take care. Bye-bye. God bless. We're going to be doing a chat with Al in about a uh, half hour, 45 minutes. Maybe we have Uncle Ron Juckin on there and the original Grognard, hopefully. And uh, we'll have some fun and some laughs. So watch out for the curveball in the dirt. You know it's coming, folks. God bless and peace!